concept that I want to introduce you guys to in this unit, and we're going to spend a lot of time dealing with this when we do the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, which is coming soon. Um, coming soon. Um, is that there are two different types of inflation, and they mean very different things. If we're talking about demand pull inflation, then that means it's caused by a change in the level of demand. And what we're doing is pulling demand to the right, so we are increasing it, caused by an increase in the level of demand. That's pretty much across the board. If you're talking about adding all of the demand curves together for everything that everyone buys for the whole economy, it's pretty huge. If that increases, then that can cause inflation. Now, what would make something like that happen? Let's say, for example, we were talking about a billion dollar tax rebate a while ago, as an example. If the government, if the legislature, let's say, Congress or national legislature, passed a law to give a billion dollars worth of tax cuts at a time when the economy was already pretty hot, and so you have that $5 billion jump in spending, suddenly people are spending gargantuan amounts of money that can cause prices to go up, okay? So having an unreasonable level of spending or having a big jump in spending, all of a sudden that can cause demand pull inflation. The other side of that, as you might have guessed, deals with supply. And we're talking about cost push. Cost, remember, refers to what it takes to produce a product. Price is what the consumer pays. Cost is incurred by the supplier. Cost push inflation means it's caused by a decrease in the total level of supply. And again, we're talking about if we add together all the supply curves for everything that is produced in the whole economy and something happens that causes that to decrease, then that can cause inflation, driven by an increase in costs. Now, what is the most common example that we see of this? Our old nemesis, gas prices. If we have an increase in gas prices, yes, it's one product. Yes, it's one component in the CPI. How does the price of one thing cause inflation across the board? Here's the key. When energy prices go up, if we're talking about gasoline, almost every product that is manufactured, that is imported, that is sold in the United States has to be transported from one place to the ultimate location where it's bought. It's moved on trucks. It's moved on planes. It's moved on something that is gas powered. And when gas prices get more expensive, then everything else, because almost everything else is moved on a truck or a plane or something gas powered, gets more expensive too. Which means that at every price level, suppliers across the board are going to be less willing to supply that same amount of their product at the same price. We see all the suppliers cut back due to an increase in cost. That is cost push inflation. Energy prices, particularly gasoline, are the only single category of a product that can cause this to happen. And it can happen really, really fast. And we've seen that over and over again in US history, most recently in the past few years. But go back and look at what happened in the 1970s if you want a really ugly picture of how this works. So the example that we saw for demand pull would be that massive tax cut. And a lot of people have not necessarily or, you know, not necessarily behind keeping the Bush tax cuts permanent or they've been absolutely against it. One of the dangers in 
a permanent tax cut is that it can spur demand pull inflation. When we're in the midst of a recession, however, that seems unlikely. But those are two possibilities. Those are your only two types of inflation. Demand pull, when you increase the level of demand and it drives prices up, or cost push, when you push back your level of supply and that causes prices to go up. You pull something forward, meaning it increases, you push something back, which can also cause prices to go up. 